Okay, so now we're going to take what I've talked about in previous videos, parent functions, identifying transformations, what transformations are, and we're going to apply all of it to actually do examples where we graph functions with transformations. Let's get started. Let's say we want to sketch using the parent function and transformations, and we've got a transformed function f of x equals negative quantity x plus 2 close quantity squared. Now I'm saying sketch, so I'm not really worried about being terribly precise in this example. So the first thing we want to do is identify the parent function, which is the x squared function. If you strip away all the arithmetic, you're just left with x squared, and that's our high order operation. We know the graph of y equals x squared, so we'll draw that in a second. Let's look at the transformations. The x transformations are the arithmetic happening to x, but in the inverse fashion. We see a plus 2, so if we inverse that, that's going to be a subtract 2 from x, which is going to shift our graph left 2 units. That's the only x transformation in this case. Let's look for our y transformations. What's happening outside of the square operation? What's happening to the square operation? Well, we're multiplying by a negative. So that's multiplied by negative 1. We don't inverse y transformations. Multiplying y's by negative 1 will reflect our graph over the x-axis. Let's see how this works when we go to graph. Start with the y equals x squared function. Shift it left two units and then reflect it over the x-axis. Now, as far as order goes, it doesn't matter what order you do. You can do x transformations first or y transformations first. It doesn't matter because they're completely independent. I could have reflected over the x-axis and then shifted left too. However, if you have multiple x transformations, the order of those does matter. Or if you have multiple y transformations, the order of those does matter. So keep that in mind. X and Y transformations are independent, but all X transformations need to be done in the proper order. All Y transformations also need to be done in the proper order. But anyway, so this was a pretty quick one. Sketch your X squared function, shift it left to, and then flip it over the X axis. Let's move on to another. This time I'm not sketching. I want to be more precise with our graph. I didn't use the word sketch here. I said graph using the parent function and transformations. f of x equals the cube root of 2x plus 4. The parent function is y equals the cube root of x. So we plug in some nice negative x values, 0, and positive x values that we can take the cube root of, and we draw our xy table. Then we identify the transformations. In this case, we only have x transformations because all of our arithmetic is inside the cube root. We look at our operations that are happening to x and we inverse them. So we see multiply by 2 and add 4. We inverse those and we switch their order. So instead of add 4, so multiply by 2 and then add 4. We have to inverse those. So we're going to subtract 4 and then divide by 2. So subtracting 4 will shift our graph left 4 units, because this is an x transformation. It's going to go left. And then we're going to go to our x column, and we're going to say to ourselves, okay, we're going to subtract 4 from those x values in our x table, or xy table. Then we're going to get a new table of values because we have another x transformation, so we need the new x values after we subtracted 4, and we're going to divide those new x values by 2, which is a horizontal shrink by a half, if you were to look at it on a graph. So I'm dividing my x, or subtracting my x values by 4, dividing my x values by 2 in that order, and that's going to give me my final xy table. This xy table is the xy table for the transformed function we started with. So now we can plot some points and we have to understand the cube root shape. In this case, our reference point for the cube root function may be a zero, zero. That's kind of the middle of, that is the middle of the graph. And if we track that reference point zero, zero all the way through, it turns into the order pair negative two, zero. So that's gonna be our reference point for our cube root function 
These, this is the same xy table we had previously. Negative 2, 0, you can see, is right here in the middle. If I plot points to the right and then plot points to the left, you can start to see that cube root graph show up. Now this method where we use actual very specific points, we only, we only picked order pairs on the parent. They changed by the transformations. So notice we never plugged any numbers into this function to get these points. But if you did check, you could pick, you could plug these x values in to this transformed function, and you should see that you will in fact get these y values. The other thing is, when you're using this table approach to get a precise graph, use as few or as many points as it takes. If you understand transformations really well, then and the parent function shapes, you should be able to shift them and reflect them and stretch them uh, pretty easily. But if you're more unsure, you can put more points in your parent function table. All right, let's go back and let's sketch another graph. Let's do this without looking at the table. Let's just look at the parent for f of x equals negative 1 over x plus 3 and graph it with or sketch it with transformations. So the parent here is the 1 over x function. If we get rid of the negative and the plus 3, we're left with the reciprocal function 1 over x. We know 1 over x looks like this. It gets infinitely close to the x and y axes in both quadrants 1 and 3. Let's see if we can find the transformations. The x transformations happen to x. We can see we have a plus 3 here. We need to inverse that because it's an x transformation. So that will be subtract 3, which will shift our graph left 3 units, as you see over here. Then our y transformations happen to the 1 over x function, to the, to the fraction, basically. So I'm multiplying by a negative. I don't inverse y transformations. So I multiply by negative 1. And when we, when we multiply y values by negative 1, remember we get a vertical reflection which occurs over the x-axis. So if we flip it over, we can see that we get this graph. And remember, the 1 over x function or any of its transformed versions have asymptotes. So the asymptotes here are at x equals negative 3. The graph gets infinitely close to that and at the line y equals 0. Let's look at example four, which we want another precise graph with transformations. So in this case, we're gonna create the parent table and apply the transformations to that. In this case, we can see that the parent function is the square root of x function, which is quick to generate a table, pick some numbers that are easy to take the square root of starting at zero and plot as many as you want. Then we're gonna look at the transformations x transformations and y transformations. If we look inside with x, the order of operations say, okay, I have to add one to x and then multiply by negative one. So I need to inverse those. So I'll divide by negative one and then subtract one because I have to inverse the operation and the order. If I divide x by negative one, that's gonna change the x sign. So I get a horizontal reflection over the y axis. And if I subtract 1 from x, that's going to shift left 1 unit. The y transformations happen outside the parent. That's just a multiply by negative 3. But in fact, that does two things to the graph. Because it's multiplying by a negative, the signs of the y are going to change. So I'm going to get a vertical reflection over the x-axis. And because I'm multiplying by 3, the y values are going to grow further from the x-axis. So I get a vertical stretch by 3. What I'm going to do is apply these transformations to my table. So I'm going to apply my first x transformation, divide all the x values by negative 1. I'm going to apply my first y transformation, multiply all the y values by negative 3. I can do those simultaneously because they're independent of each other, and I get a new table of values. Now I need to finish by doing my second x transformation. So I'll go to my x column, and I'll subtract 1 which gives me new x values, and the y values stay the same. And that's all there is to it. This new table is going to be the graph of the new square root function, the transformed square root function that we started with. And it's, you know, 0, 0 is a good reference point. 
and that turned into negative 1, 0 on my transformed function. If I plot those points and understand the square root graph, it's going to start at my reference point and then go on <clears throat> forever in the other direction. You can kind of see here the square root function typically starts at 0, 0 and goes up and to the right. Well, it's been reflected over the y-axis. Um, it's been shifted left one, it's been reflected over the x-axis, and it's definitely taller because it's been stretched vertically. So you can kind of see all the evidence here in the graph. Let's do another sketch of 1 minus 1 fourth times the quantity x minus 2 cubed. In this case, again, I like to rewrite it uh, and move my 1 to the end so that I can see that it's a plus 1 that very clearly tells me that's going to be a, a shift of some kind. The, the parent function here is the x cubed function, which we know the graph of. And again, I'm sketching, so I'm not looking at the table of values. I'm just going to apply the transformations. Let's look at the x transformations. If I go find x, I can see that I'm just subtracting 2. So that's going to correspond to an add 2, which will take our graph and shift it to the right two units because it's adding two to x. And that's the only x transformation. Let's move on to the y's. I've got a multiply by negative one fourth and an add one. If I multiply by negative one fourth, that's going to do two things. Multiplying by negative is going to be a vertical reflection. So we're going to take this graph and flip it over the x-axis. And multiplying by one fourth is going to shrink the y values. So it's going to shrink by a factor of one fourth. So we flip it over and we compress it vertically, making the graph look wider. Next, we'll add one to the y values, which is simply going to shift the graph up one unit and we get our final sketch. Still a cube function, uh, but been transformed. Example six, our last example, is going to show the power of transformations as they apply to any function you can think of. In this case, g of x is our function that we're going to transform, and f of x is the transformed function, which multiplies g by a negative and inputs 2x. So we're going to have two transformations here on this parent. So let's start with the parent function. How do we do this? How do we graph the f of x function? Well, just like any other transformations problem, we can start with a table of values. My parent is the g of x function pictured. I'm going to pick some points on this graph, as many as I want. But in my case, I'm going to pick important points. For example, negative 8, 6 seems like a significant point on this graph. Uh, because it's an open circle, the graph kind of terminates here. And then I've got a straight line all the way down to the point negative 4, 2. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take care of that point as well, because that's sort of a transition point of the graph. Um, another significant point on this sort of half circle might be the order pair 0, negative 2, because it's kind of the peak of this. And then last, I'll use 4, 2. So I'll use those four ordered pairs to track my transformations through. So if we look at the x transformations, we go inside and we can see x is multiplied by 2, which corresponds to the inverse operation, divide all of the x values by 2. That's going to compress our graph horizontally by a half, or give us a horizontal shrink. And that's the only x transformation. So let's see if there's any y's that I can do outside of the g parent function, which is multiplied by negative. I don't inverse that, so I'm going to multiply my y values by negative 1, which is going to give us a vertical reflection over the x-axis. And those are all of my transformations. So if I apply that arithmetic to my x's and my y's, I get my final table of values for the f of x equals negative g of 2x function. Now I'm going to plot those points, understanding that negative 8, 6 was this open circle. Now it's negative 4, negative 6. That's going to be my open circle. Negative 4, 2 was the line segment endpoint from the open circle. So that's going to be the same thing for negative 2, negative 2. 
Zero, two is going to be the new peak of this half circle. And two, negative two is going to be the closed circle. So I'll plot those points. Open circle, running a straight line. Half circle, and now it's more of an ellipse to the closed circle. And we can see our transformed function. We took the original parent. It's been flipped over the x-axis and compressed horizontally. So hopefully that was a lot of examples to give you a really clear understanding of how transformations work, how you can use them quickly to sketch a graph, how you can use them precisely to, to graph a transformed function with a table of values. But in any case, I hope you enjoyed the video and learned a lot. Good luck.